If you're building an Arduino based project, it's super important to be able to power the whole project, including the Arduino. But how do you do it correctly? In this video, I'll walk you through how an Arduino actually gets its power and how you can power any Arduino project, even if it uses power hungry components or even multiple voltage levels. Let's take a quick look at the three main ways that an Arduino can receive power so we can understand what's happening when we do power one. I'll assume that you're using an Arduino that accepts five volt power. First, we have the V in pin and on some Arduinos, a positive polarity barrel jack as well. Both of these options allow you to supply a higher voltage than five volts to your Arduino. This is then fed into the onboard voltage regulator, which steps it down to the five volts that your Arduino needs. On common Arduino models, you can supply anywhere from seven to 12 volts through either of these inputs, but some Arduino models do have other requirements. Next, we have the USB port. This is the most common way to power your Arduino during development. It's convenient because it also allows you to upload your code and monitor serial data at the same time. When this connector is connected to your computer or a USB power adapter, the Arduino receives five volts from the USB port. Notice in this diagram that the USB port bypasses the voltage regulator. That's because any USB device already supplies five volts. But what would happen if you were to power the Arduino through the V in pin and then also plug it in through USB. A big bang and a fire, right? Actually, no. The Arduino is very clever and cuts off drawing power from the USB port if it's being powered through the barrel jack or the V in pin. This is done through a simple P-channel MOSFET which switches off when it detects around 6.6 .6 volts at the voltage regulator input on the Arduino. And what's even cooler is that it's only the power line from the USB that's being disconnected by the MOSFET. Your Arduino will still be able to talk to your computer through the USB when powered this way. The last and most interesting way to power an Arduino is through the five volt pin. This bypasses the voltage regulator entirely and connects directly to the Arduino's five volt rail. If you connect a five volt power supply to this pin, you are effectively providing your own voltage regulator. This can be very useful for larger projects that already use a five volt power supply, and I'll be showing you exactly how to do this in this video. Now let's jump into three common ways that you can use to power an entire Arduino project, including projects that have higher power components. And if this video is helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to help this channel grow. If you have a project that only needs five volts or 3.3 volts and needs less than an amp, you can actually power your project through your Arduino and run the whole thing off a USB charger or another power supply. Here's a very simple example on a breadboard. This is an Arduino Nano clone, and here's that five volt pin running to the power rail on the breadboard. And then of course, I also have the ground pin connected to the ground rail so that we're able to complete a full circuit. When I hook up power through the USB port, for example, the LED lights up. And that's because the Arduino is feeding five volts to the power rail on my breadboard, and that in turn powers the LED. As long as I don't exceed the current limit of either the Arduino or the USB power source that I'm using, this is a great way to power a project. When using this approach, I prefer USB because USB chargers are just so ubiquitous these days and some of them are nice and compact. But if you prefer, you can use VIN or the barrel jack with a seven to 12 volt power supply instead. There are a couple gotchas to watch out for. Most Arduino boards can supply up to an amp this way, but there are exceptions like the Nano, which is only rated for 0.8 amps. Secondly, the power supply that you are using must also be able to handle your project's current needs. Many of the older bricks used to only support half an amp, so make sure to check the back. Older USB ports are also limited to half an amp if you're planning to power this off a computer. Now, what if we need to power a project that uses more than the one amp of current that the Arduino can supply? For example, powering a solenoid using my handy solenoid tester. There's a couple ways to handle that. In this section, we're going to use a higher voltage external power supply and the V in pin of the Arduino in order to power it. 
This is a great approach if your project already uses a higher voltage such as 12 volts and you're trying to figure out how to use that same voltage supply to power the Arduino as well. To make this work, your external power supply needs to be in the voltage range that your Arduino's voltage regulator accepts. I've got a 12 volt brick style supply that I'll be using in this example. In this scenario, the barrel connector is supplying 12 volts to the power rail, so this is no longer 5 volts. To make the Arduino work properly, I've now connected the V in pin on the Arduino to the power rail. Notice also that ground continues to be connected to ground. That does not change. The advantage of this setup is that the electronics on the Arduino are no longer powering our entire project. Instead, we have an external power supply that is capable of supplying more current than the one amp that the Arduino can do. And the Arduino can still control the solenoid using this MOSFET here. If you're curious how and why this works, I do have a video all about controlling solenoids using an Arduino, so be sure to check that out as well. A few things that you should know when using this approach. Just like in the previous example, it's still perfectly fine to use that 5 volt pin that I showed you to power other 5 volt parts of your project as long as you don't exceed the Arduino's current limit on all of your 5 volt parts. Next, be very careful when wiring up projects like this. Again, this is 12 volts here, so if I were to take this power rail and connect it elsewhere on the Arduino, such as the 5 volt pin, then I would damage it. It's also important to realize that V in does not have polarity protection, so you don't accidentally want to miswire things. Lastly, this is a good time to mention that I'm using breadboards throughout this video because they make it really easy to see how you can build these circuits and wire them up. However, breadboards are not actually a really great choice for higher power projects because they themselves can only handle about an amp of current. So if you're building a project for real that uses motors and solenoids or whatever else, you are probably going to want to solder it together on a perf board instead. Let's move on to a slightly more advanced but more flexible method of powering your Arduino. Using an external 5 volt power supply connected directly to the Arduino's 5 volt pin. This allows us to bypass the Arduino's voltage regulator and allows us to supply the Arduino directly from our own 5 volt power source. Here's an example that may seem familiar from our first demo, but it's slightly different. We once again have the power rail connected to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino and of course ground continues to be connected to ground. However, this time, instead of trying to power the circuit by connecting power to the Arduino itself, such as through the USB port or the V in pin, we are going to hook up a 5 volt power source directly to this power rail. This is running off a USB charger, but it can be any power supply that's 5 volts. And we can see what happened. The lights on the Arduino went on because the Arduino is receiving power and our LED of course lit up as well because that's connected directly to the power rail. In fact, I can remove this Arduino board from this breadboard entirely and this LED will stay on because the Arduino plays no role in distributing power to the rest of a project. This frees us up from needing that 7 to 12 volt supply that the Arduino voltage regulator requires and allows us to power the whole project once again off only a 5 volt supply. But this time we are not limited by the Arduino's current limits and can build a project that uses 5 volt motors, maybe large LED strips and all sorts of other things and everything can still work. This approach of powering your Arduino through the 5 volt pin opens up some interesting possibilities with using multiple power supplies in your project. Let's take one more look at the solenoid demo that I was showing you before. What if instead of using 12 volts, I want to feed 24 volts into this solenoid? That'll give it a little bit more oomph and as long as I don't power it on too long, it'll be totally fine. The problem with this scenario is that the Arduino's voltage regulator can only accept 12 volts. So it's no longer going to be possible to power the Arduino off the 24 volt supply. Here's how we get around this problem and make everything work. 
I've got 24 volts coming into this breadboard. This is only responsible for powering this solenoid. The Arduino never touches that 24 volt rail as you can see for yourself. Instead, I've got a second 5 volt power supply that you saw in the last example on this second power rail and this is the power supply that actually powers the Arduino. So I've got the Arduino connected here through its 5 volt pin to the 5 volt supply and not the 24 volt supply. So don't mix those two up. Also, if you are going to be using multiple power supplies in your project, you normally need to have the grounds of those power supplies connected together, unless it's a special case like the two are completely electrically isolated. But in this case, this is critical or it could damage a lot of things, including your Arduino. With this setup, the Arduino can be happily powered from the 5 volt power rail and, of course, just like before, it can interact with a solenoid through this MOSFET. And again, there is a video that explains how all of that works. This is actually a pretty typical scenario for larger projects. You'll often have one power supply that's 5 volts or 3.3 volts that powers all of the electronics in your project. And then you may have one or more power supplies that offer a higher voltage for the components that need them. A few more things you need to know if you're going to power your Arduino through that 5 volt pin. For starters, make sure that this is in fact a 5 volt stable power supply that you are using. You can't use batteries when powering your Arduino this way. You can't use a power supply that's a higher voltage. It has to be 5 volts. If you're using this approach, under no circumstances should you also try to power the Arduino through the V-in pin or that barrel connector that is gonna cause problems and could possibly damage the voltage regulator on the Arduino. The Arduino website actually warns about this specific scenario. The Arduino website also doesn't recommend connecting anything to the USB port of your Arduino when you're using this approach to power it. There are some nuances to this, but if you wanna avoid breaking anything, it's best to make sure that you disconnect the Arduino completely from your project before programming it. Let's touch on batteries quickly. If you're building a portable project, then being able to use batteries is a must. But it's not quite as simple as you expect. In fact, if you want to see a full length video on the topic of powering battery projects, leave a comment down below. If you want to power your project off conventional, non-rechargeable batteries, then a 9-volt alkaline battery is your best bet. Since a 9-volt battery's working voltage is within the range that the Arduino's voltage regulator accepts, you can add a 9-volt battery connector to your project pretty easily. For example, I made my own 9-volt to barrel connector cable here. You can buy them as well, and that makes it very easy to connect it to this Uno clone. And just like that, it's powered. Another increasingly popular option to power an Arduino project is using LiPo batteries such as this one. However, these batteries can be way more dangerous than alkaline batteries because they tend to catch fire. For example, if they're overcharged, discharged too much, or damaged in any way. To use them safely, it is very important to use a battery protector circuit of some kind. The safest way to use them in an Arduino project is to buy one of the newer Arduinos that actually has a separate battery connector on it that has all of the required circuitry to manage the LiPo battery properly. It can even charge it, allowing you to create a rechargeable project. Hopefully that demystifies powering your Arduino projects. If you have questions or you build something cool using your Arduino, make sure you leave a comment down below. And of course, like and subscribe in order to be able to see more of these tutorials.